In this video I'm going to talk about creating a druid and which are the best starting positions and race to take when starting on a new TLP server. Okay so this is going to go worst to first and we're starting off with number four out of four and the worst one to pick is the half elf in my opinion the stats are of such 95 wisdom which is really so low stamina is okay starting positions are going to be sure fall glade and you can also change your deity and start in greater fade arc so if you're going to start in greater fade arc you're probably going to make a, a wood elf instead you are not going to see a lot of half elf druids around out there people are going to mostly opt for the human or the halfling so this is going to be a short um analysis of uh, the worst to first okay next on the list is the human the human actually has pretty decent stats right here uh, 110 wisdom and 90 stamina it's pretty good the problem with this human is the human starts in surefall glade and that's over on kinos it's the only starting position it has so you're kind of stuck over there but if you don't mind that's okay if your friends are over there that's okay too and humans not bad at all you see very few human druids out there uh, but they, they are the beautiful people so if you want to be one of the beautiful ones and you like the human look pick the human now number two is a really really tough choice it's down between the wood elf and the halfling but I'm gonna stick with the stats here and I'm gonna say let's go with the wood elf right here and the reason why is the wood elf over here has a really good starting position which is greater fade arc and it has very very good stats almost the same as the halfling halfling is slightly better uh, stats and also people will pick this This is the most common one because of the looks they're very very cute characters and people like them a lot the female wood elf is the most common one uh, out there so you can see here greater fade arc is your starting location and your only starting location let's talk about number one now the good old halfling and the halfling here can start in Rivervale and only Rivervale. It has 115 wisdom. It has 90 stamina, which is better. You'll notice the dexterity is higher. So it's got great stats. It just doesn't look as cute. And especially with big furry feet, people are thinking, hmm, what did I make this for? But anyway, you'll see more of the um, hardcore players will pick the halfling because uh, in the old days, halflings used to have a 5% experience bonus. But nowadays, they don't have that bonus anymore, I come to find out. And that's pretty sad because it would went really well with it and now fewer people are going to be making the halflings even with a slightly better stamina you look at it but it's all about the wisdom with with uh, druids so people are probably going to make more of the um wood elves here but they're they're over made you see too many wood elves but like they say you got to look good doing it and so that's why they pick uh the wood elf but let's just go ahead and make a halfling here just in case you want to be over here with your friends and start over there with them and we're gonna make it in Missy Thicket let's name him okay, my uber and we're gonna go into Rivervale. let's go ahead and let me show you around a little bit and give you an idea what you're gonna be doing okay so as we log in to the game this is it here you get a couple uh, nice abilities with the halfling um, and uh, let's go ahead and turn in our uh, t-shirt uh, right here so we can get t-shirt put this on raise our stats a little the halflings get something called hide and sneak right here so let's go ahead and show you how this works so if you are somewhere and you're metting up you can hit hide like this and you'll notice that this guy over here He's indifferent, okay, so watch, we move. And he's amiable, see how his uh, faction changes from amiable to indifferent. Now, for the halfling, it's amazing. I got it on the first try, hi. Indifferent, it, this is amazing, it works every time. Some, some races, it doesn't work every time, like on the dark elf, it doesn't work every single time. You can also sneak at the same time. So you can hide and sneak. This way, if you break this, you can go well it's supposed to go and reduce his faction so let's get behind him like so and let's do it over again and sneak he's amiable you can uh, it should work let's move a little bit 
amiable. Let's hit sneak again. There we go. It's indifferent. So it's indifferent now. Watch this. Look at that, you can sneak right behind them. You can go everywhere, it's like being inviso. What it really does, it reduces um, his reaction level to you to quite a bit. And so you can uh, not be seen or monsters won't react to you. This is a very, very good skill to have. Um, you can use it for recovering corpses, getting down to places in dungeon or stuff. You just go into sneak, but you have to, this is how you do it. You con something and you keep working the sneak until you got the sneak going just right. Let's take sneak off because we're going to get out of here. So he will sell you spells and all that. Uh, you don't have any money at this point. So what you need to do is you need to go out to the newbie grounds. Let's go out there real quick and I'll show you around. real fast and here we go it's good to drive by map see on the map notice I take off labels it's much easier to drive run that way and when you start out the most important thing to do when you're fighting is if you're fighting alone and solo you want to take stuff down that's maybe no more than one level above you. At a low level like this, you want to try to fight even con, which is white colored, or you want to try to fight, you know, level two, since I'm level one. When you take down higher stuff, you will need the assistance of a group. Uh, later on, you can go ahead and get a group, and that will make things a lot easier. Let's go ahead and show you the first camp. First camp is going to be up north here, and this camp is going to be the undead camp. And have hamsters over here. Uh, you have to be careful of these guys here because the disease rat is level three. He will kill you for sure and this will definitely destroy you faster than you can spell his name out. Watch out for these undeads here but this isn't bad if you can get a group uh, to set up here. This is a really really great place for a group but an easier spot is somewhere over here by this hill and you can see over here this guy he's a large thicket rat He's level four, he's still tough, but right up on this hill, there should be easier monsters to uh, fight. See this bat here, he's about right for us. So approach him, uh, try to engage him from the back. Get your first hits on him. Watch your health over here. It's also good to put your shield up, but for these guys, you don't need to if you don't want to. Um, you're going to be able to take them down, no problem. Just the fight sometimes takes a little while. They don't hit all that hard here. may take a while it's good to have when you get your first nuke it'll be good to use it so let's go ahead and show you what your stats are 31 hit points AC is armor class of 7 now let's put skin like wood up and with skin like wood you can see how the stats got better here and if you need to regenerate your health just go ahead and heal yourself with minor healing or what you can do is just to have a seat here and get your health back up this fire beetle, always make sure you press letter C to con them. He's level 2. You might be able to take him. Let's try it and I'll show you what happens if you can't take him. Fire beetle, he will give you more experience. When you get your first nuke, uh, that will help a lot. You can use that to fire at him and take him out. And you can see I got about 15% off this guy, maybe a little more, which is pretty good experience. On the Air Dune server, it would probably be one-fifth of that or maybe less. You gotta be kidding me, is Prince Clacknack gonna ruin my day? Okay, so if you see that happen, it's time to run for it and just run. You wanna run to the guards. Okay, he's spoiling my party here. And good old Clacknack, you can see here he is level two. And two of those, you're not gonna be able to take him on. Just run for it. He's one of the uh, semi-named out here. And so just uh, run back here. You can see you have no problem outrunning these guys. And we were we could have beaten uh, Fire Beetle. He's only halfway 
He's about a third of the way and we're doing fine. And over here, if you wait, there you go. They killed uh, Prince Clacknack for us. Very nice. We can even go back out and get our fire beetle and finish him off. As long as you fight him a little bit of ways from the guards, you can do this. You can you can pull a whole train of stuff. I mean, a whole bunch of monsters and come back and fight him right by the guards. Let's go back a little ways in case he tries to run. We have plenty of mana to heal here so we can heal ourselves when it gets down to it. Come on, swing at him. And this is why it's good to have a nuke because with the nuke you can uh, uh, nuke him going away. If you attack from the back as he's running, you gain uh, a chance to hit him. You notice how we're actually hitting him more. And this is, and now we got him at a 6% and got him. Okay, so we got some loot here. Fire, this is a quest, fire beetle leg. Okay, so now we're done with that. It all went well, took a little damage. Gonna use some mana to heal ourselves up. This also raises our skill. Okay, so now it's time to make that run. Uh, some of you may not wanna start here, even though it's a fine starting location. You may wanna start in the Common Lands Tunnel, way out there, which is uh, a lot nicer. Uh, that's where all the action's gonna be. People are gonna be buying and selling there. You're gonna find more groups there and everything. And as you level up, you're definitely gonna wanna be out of here uh, to go where, you wanna go where everybody else is. So let's go through right here. And now we have made it back into Rivervale. We need to go to the other exit, which is Kithikor Forest. Make sure you're not doing this at night. If you are, it is very, very dangerous. There's undead over there and they have no mercy for you. They have a big aggro because they're very high level compared to you. And so they will aggro, meaning they'll attack you and uh, they'll kill you very, very quickly. Okay, so let's go this way here. Paladin Guildmaster outside, that's strange. I need to give him a home. Okay, so in we go. We're heading into Kithikor Forest. If you're doing this thing at in the daytime or at the nighttime, I would suggest doing it the same way. Get used to it. It's getting to be nighttime pretty soon here. What you want to do is you want to uh, scoot along the top edge of the map right here. You can barely see it, but you want to do it like this. Let's go ahead and change the map like so. You want to hug the, the, the edge there because it is getting close to nighttime. So go up this way, get high up on, hit numlock so you can get high up on the wall here. And this is what's gonna save you. Any moment you're gonna start seeing undead pop out and that's gonna be a nightmare. So we gotta really run it. And we probably only have a short while left. You can go back and look at the video, see how long it takes uh, to get this far um, and how long I can get all the way over there. Maybe it's only like 10 minutes or so, but if you see it dark outside, you have the option to wait around until it turns to, to daytime before trying it again. When you see these trees, just try to go down a little bit. Sometimes undead are real close. So stay up here. After you pass these two trees, you're in great shape. See, I'm doing this. I'm just hugging the uh, side of the wall. And it's a little bit of run. We can do it. It's getting a little scary. You can see it's getting darker. Uh, sometimes there's some mobs uh, in the entrance there for whatever reason. Um, just be careful when you get around corners to proceed with caution. If you see anything there, you know, just wait it out. Don't try to uh, run past it. And I don't know why, but you'll just see st weird stuff happen out here. But uh, you don't want to run all this way and find out there's something waiting for you at the exit to the zone. So here we go. We didn't know, we're not going to even look the other way. Just help keep the, hit the num lock once and keep running it. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. People say, well, this is really, really bad. And it's really scary, but it's more difficult uh, to get through 
in and through a swamp, I think, when you're running a troll up out of there, I think that's uh, much more difficult than this here. Or, you know, uh, there's other difficult ones that are a little tricky, like the run from Felwith to Freeport. There's a few things that will just randomly kill you. Uh, not your fault or anything, but it would just happen. So we're going to stay all the way along this edge. Looks like we're going to make it here. It's going to get dark soon. If we made it this far, uh, we're in great shape because undead will spawn a little bit back here. They don't spawn exactly on the uh, wall. They're about level 30s, I believe. And uh, they can see through Inviso, which is bad. Okay, let's make this turn here. Once again, staying as high up on the wall as we can. Shoot, this is not good. We, look at that. We got a Bixie drone on us. This is not good. Run it. So if you run it close to the wall here, sometimes the pathing confuses them. Make sure there's nobody here. There's nobody here. And look at that. There's always something like this. But if you made it this far, you're in great shape. And the mobs get confused with this turn right here. And it's done that way so mobs don't collect there. And we made it. So one Bixie drone on us right at the end, but we made it there. And also when you're close to the wall, sometimes the pathing makes them go away from the wall, which is uh, another nice thing. Okay, so now we're in the common lands. And the thing about the common lands is that it's not um, so apparent where to go what you have to see here is you have to go something like this here and let's do this here let's put up the map and let me point out the dangers of the common land. let's make this a big map like this okay so you have an orc camp up here you have another bandit camp so you just can't go along the edge down on the side you can't do this you've got the shadow man camp and you got to be really really careful about this so the funny thing about this is that actually going through the middle is kind of the safest way to go through. You can also use sneak if you get a, uh, a successful sneak and use your sneak to your advantage. But let's try to go ahead and go through the normal way and see if we can do it. So remember or camp at the top and the other stuff down at the bottom. So let's see here. What we want to do is also you want to check to see if the... Uh, cats and there's a lot of lions running around see if they are KOS to you because if they are KOS if they're not KOS you're gonna be okay so we're gonna head a little bit right down here towards the lake here okay see this guy this is an orc orc pawn he wants to kill you The bear is your friend. This is what's good because animals do like you. So that's one thing that works in your advantage. You have to survey the area. You have snakes. Snakes indifferent. Check everything. Indifferent. And there should be, this looks like something bright over there. Maybe a wisp or something. Okay, so oh, there's a plains cat over there. He's dubious. Okay, so this is good. So they're dubious to you. So what that means is that the Kodiak and all that is amiable. They love druids. Uh, all you have to basically watch out for uh, are the uh, ponds, orc ponds, things like that. So you want to go through the middle because in the middle uh, it's a lot safer. You don't have to worry about um, undead. If you go to the south, there's undead. Check these guys for faction. So this guy's faction is good. So you can get over here and you're going to be okay. And um, check everything like this. This is this guy is indifferent. Okay. Shopkeeper, fishing supplies, you're okay so far. And uh, what you want to do is try to go uh, uh, kind of along the uh, lake and go straight through. And if you can get to the druid ring you'll see 
this area here, there's a Druid ring. This will be your next safe stop. If you can get there in one piece, you're okay. So let's head over to the Druid ring. And that's a safe area over there for now, even though it's near a Derv camp. Good, see dubious, so you can get over here and it's safe. These, these guys are druids, they should uh, love you. They're indifferent, okay, so they're all right. So now you've made it to the druid ring, you're safe over here for now. So now that you're in the druid ring, next place you wanna go is you wanna go to, you wanna stay kind of close to the, the top here. You have to watch out for uh, zombies and things like this. So what that means, you want to go around this little uh, two fingers right here and uh, proceed along that way. Okay, so that's how you're going to do it. So let's uh, prepare to do that. And like I said, this is without sneak or anything. If you want to be really sure about it, you just hit sneak and make sure you get a successful sneak and then go for it. This is a derv. Okay, derv is uh, indifferent to us. So let's kind of go this way. Take a look around here. Should be okay. Nice thing is that uh, bears love you and rather than hate you. Okay, let's go down here. You got an orc camp coming up. You have to be careful of the orc camp coming up uh, straight ahead there. And it is gonna be up there. We're gonna have orcs up there. We got a little ways to go. We might be able to go past it. Okay, they got a wolf there. And wolves are amiable. That's really it's a good thing right there. And keep an eye out for like giants because on new servers there is, look at this, the zombie over there. Let's move away from him. Keep an eye on Mr. Zombie. what I tell you? This guy will kill you. So zombie there, that's a no-no. You don't want the zombie at all. Good to run in third person mode so you can see everything. And Shadow Wolf should be okay. Line is dubious. On all these goods see this is if you were not a druid these all would want to come out and attack you which would be bad news for you so keep your eyes out open for a uh, sand giant I mean hill giant things like that you need to get a little further down before you make the, the run to here I like to get about right here where it says trap and play, just a little bit before that. Okay, 
So we're about to that area. And we're going to try to go ahead and swing in there. Come across, try to come across at this kind of angle. Okay, we're almost there. We got a straight shot all the way into this area right here. So it looks like we pretty much got it. Let's go ahead and make the move in there. Head straight south. From here, take a look around. Do you see anything? Commonland Tunnel is right over there. On a fresh server, there will be groups hunting out here, so they're probably killing most of the stuff. And whoa, look at that. This is a skeleton level 4. He will kill you if you get up to him. Just wait for him to go by. And once he goes by, you're going to be home free. Okay, so we got a clear shot. Let's wait for him and let's run. And our destination is going to be the soul binder in here. And there's a puma. Puma should be dubious because we're animal lovers. We've made it to the common lands tunnel. And look at these guys here. They're already here getting ready for the big TLP. And in we go. We finally made it. And, uh, yeah, so just be really careful when you come down here. Uh, remember, the common lands has its own dangers. It has dangers like the um, undead in there. There's a hill giant usually somewhere around. You got to be careful of him. Here's your parcel noble exchange. This is where you're going to be setting up your base. All you do is go over here, right click this person, and you can go ahead and send things to people like. And you can send him this or that, and he'll send you stuff back if it's your other character. So create a level one character, transfer money to it. You can also sell items to this person here, uh, like this. You see, we sell for eight top, eight, and then you sell this. You've now got some money uh, here. You've got one silver. So after you get money, just send it back to your level one character. Level one character buys spells. And those spells, they can parcel back to you, and you can go and get them. After that, you have the... Um, soul binder right here and this is really good it's in a central location it's safe in here you don't have to worry about anything just hail him and say bind your soul and now this is it at level five you will get origin and origin you'll be able to hit that if you want to go back to your hometown and after that you can uh, set up groups out here and go for this side which is a uh, common land side it has a very very fast spawn rate or you can head over to uh, this other, um, where this other area is, you see. And this area is going to be North Row. So you're heading over to North Row as we go. Okay, that's it, everybody. Good luck on your druids out there and getting started. What you should do is get in over there to the North Row area, start hunting stuff, get up to level 7 or so. And you can do that after level 7. Uh, you want to start fighting your way over to South Road to do crocodiles. And then later move your way further south. Okay, good luck and see you out there.